Hi. Continuing on the beam forming in Wi-Fi and 5G, and specifically we are clearing the air on various doubts that I have encountered during courses. Today I'll take up downlink multi-user MIMO, which is you know very closely aligned to the whole beam forming idea. Okay. My name is Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. Let me start with Wi-Fi because, you know, in a bigger way, I would say Wi-Fi is where MU MIMO started, especially on the downlink. Uh, of course, the access point is trying to basically create beams like this. In fact, downlink MU MIMO is specifically called as an MU beam forming with the AP as the MU beam former and obviously based on our previous discussions remember these beams are some logical way to kind of give an idea of the final effects actual rf transmission need not be confined to that particular beam okay now for the ap to achieve this in this as say in this example it has to get very detailed feedback from the users. So that's one of the aspects of the downlink MU MIMO in Wi-Fi. In fact, that, that feedback is a very extensive process with its own protocol and the sizes of the feedback, which are you know uh, matrices at every subcarrier or a group of subcarriers. And they're pretty large you can say files or large frames which are transferred if you look at what the ap is doing with the feedback is that every subcarrier or tone or resource element it's basically figuring out what is the pre-processing that it should do for let's say in this example two users such that we can use the same time and frequency resources this is very important because some people do keep asking me whether we can use the same time and frequency so i'm saying that same time and frequency resources are used but with the right spatial processing we can get the effects as we saw in the previous page has this been successful in the wi-fi area I think it's it's still finding its feet because a lot of computation has to first of all happen correctly and two the choosing when to do beam form a multi-user MIMO rather and when maybe not is also a decision that the scheduler has to take appropriately because remember various things the MCS that you can use when you do MU MIMO how well can you separate the users etc the potential for downlink mu mimo again lies from the fact that the access point typically can accommodate a large number of antennas whereas the client device typically has settled down to a two stream as we call in the language of wi-fi predominantly there are lesser in iot and there are slightly more in some high-end devices what about cellular in cellular the real action i would say with multi-user mimo has gotten a big boost with this whole idea of massive mimo this has become a major marketing term for the whole 5g uh, mimo community i would say and large investments in the base station people are talking about you know hundreds of antennas okay and there's lots of you know public domain material which is being shared by vendors as to how they are creating panels and putting it uh, in dense congested areas so one of the things with cellular is of course a base station does serve a large number of users and so uh, this always attracts a lot of attention so again principally the idea is similar that we are trying to create these logical beams by the processing at the base station uh, of course similar to the wi-fi case the way to get these beams happening of course once the scheduler chooses to do something is by getting what is called as feedback now in the case of cellular feedback is a little bit more organized optimized called as csi channel state information and 
it's not necessary that very big feedback is always sent. Uh, right from LTE days, we have had some kind of a pre-coding matrix indicator which can help choose the correct beam. But 5G to support the MU MIMO also adds extra information, okay, which can really help fine tune the MU MIMO process, not just the strongest beam, but variety of information about other beams or precoders, which might be having different effects for the users. So in, in a nutshell, you can say that the MU MIMO in both Wi-Fi and 5G are getting ready for prime time. Wi-Fi may be not having so many users under one AP at a given time for use in MU MIMO, but still volume of data might be high. And in cellular, of course, a large number of users uh, under a given cell site in especially hotspot conditions could be served by this. Time will tell us how successful this gets into the field with all the scheduling and other challenges. For more, please see our website. We also offer courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thank you.